Our next speaker this morning is Honorable Michael Watson, Republican. He's our Secretary of State of the State of Mississippi. Good morning, Neshoba County, or should I say Jennifer Browning country. Uh, Jennifer and I were in the Senate together, and I saw her this morning, so I know she's got a lot of folks here. Uh, I know she's somewhere around here. I don't make endorsements, but I just uh, wanted to say hello to her in her home county, in her Senate district, by the way. A uh, lot to talk about this morning. As y'all can see, my beautiful wife is with me, Lauren, back here. My girls are over here on the right, so uh, if Corbeth winds up in the rafters while I'm speaking, y'all just disregard. Uh, she'll get down safely later. Uh, my sister's here, Carrie, and my team is here. By the way, they're not on the clock. I want to let y'all know that. They're not being paid for this. Uh, but I couldn't do what I do without them. I think it's so important that we talk about our teams, give them the credit that they deserve. A uh, really important piece for us. And, and whether it's Robima and public lands or Eric and securities, uh, you know, or Felicia and business services, it doesn't matter. All of them care about their work. They care about the job they're doing. They care about the state of Mississippi. So it's important that they get the credit, not just me. As much as, as I deserve credit, they probably deserve more than that. So it's really important. I want to talk a little bit about elections this morning. You may remember back in 2019 when I was running, I talked about making sure that only United States citizens voted in our elections. And people at the time said, you know, that's, that's not that big of a deal. That's, that's not necessary here in Mississippi. And I said, look, you understand, if we look now in San Francisco, there are nine citizens voting in school board elections. So it's happening. And how many times have we seen things matriculate across the country? So we can't sit back and rest. We've got to be prepared just in case something like the southern border happening now happens to our country. So I did my homework, I studied, I worked hard. Our team and I put together some legislation, the legislators passed it, and I'm happy to say that it's now fully implemented here in Mississippi. Only United States citizens will be voting in our elections in Mississippi. <clears throat> and because the integrity of the process is really important to me, and I hope it is to you too, by the way, all of us, it should not be a Republican or Democrat thing, it should be integrity in the election process is important to everyone. I want to let you know some of the things the legislature has done. Again, they deserve so much credit. A few things here really quickly. We required all of our election machines to have paper verifiable trails. If you ever have a question about a machine, there will be paper to back it up. I think that's really important to make sure you understand to return the confidence in the process. We have banned uh, voter harvesting, very important. We've banned outside dollars coming into election administration, another very important thing. And one of the things that I want you to understand is post-election audits. We were able to get those passed, and we've already done our first four or five in the state. By 2027, 20, all 82 counties will have been audited. Very important to make sure that our elections commissioners and our circuit clerks are following the law. I can't be everywhere, but when I see they're doing their job and they're following the law, it should get all of us confidence. So making sure that our post-election audits are in place, really, really important to us. Uh, so excited about that. In our office, this is outside the legislature. By the way, most of this happened in the first uh, term. So a lot of credit to Senator Jeff Tate. I don't know if he's here or not, but he, he did a phenomenal job. Uh, appreciate the work that he did, uh, as well as Representative Brent Powell from Rankin County. So a lot of great work went in then. We're now seeing it implemented. And that's the important piece, because that's our job. The legislature did their job, now it's time to do my job. And I want to talk about a couple of things we've done as well. We've signed MOUs with several states around our surrounding borders, be it Tennessee, Louisiana, Arkansas, Alabama. And what those MOUs do is we compare our voter registration databases to each state. We just got our results back from Alabama. 8,000 double registrants. People registered in both Alabama and Mississippi. Now I wanna take that down just really quickly. Worst case scenario, and I don't think this is true, so I wanna be very clear about that. But say all 8,000 of those folks live in Alabama. That means you have 8,000 names on the voter rolls in Mississippi that can be taken advantage of. That's what we need to worry about, making sure our voter rolls are clean. And that's the job of the elections commissioners and the circuit clerks. So that's important for you to know who to hold accountable. I cannot force them to do their job, but when I educate you, and you go to the voter's ballot box, that's your job to hold them accountable, making sure they're doing their job. So those numbers are on our website now, you can check them monthly. Really important for you to hold them accountable. You know, but that's not all about election integrity. We've now shifted our focus to campaign finance reform. I talked about that last year, y'all may recall. I want to say thank you again to the legislature. I see our president pro tem back there, Dean Kirby. They funded our system. The RFP will be going out next year, uh, within the next month, for the system to be integrated next year. But there's some pieces left to that. 
If you've ever looked at the FEC, you can easily search information on candidates, who's giving their money, and who is in charge of their campaigns. I think that's important. That's integrity. That's, that's clarity. So as we've got the money to build this system now, I need the legislature to put a couple more pieces in. Number one, we want to move the administration of the enforcement of campaign finance reform to our office to make sure somebody's watching that, taking care of that. The second piece is, is making sure all elected officials file their campaign finance reports electronically online, from the mayor on up to the governor. So you can see everybody. And let me make a quick note here. Did y'all know the FEC started mandating this in 2001? We are 23 years behind the federal government. That's not a good place to be. So when I hear people in the legislature say, you know what, we don't have access to the internet. I can't file mine online. I don't buy that. We've got to make sure that we're getting clarity in the process. Lastly, we have got to do a better job of prosecuting election fraud. I've sent about 20 cases over to the AG's office, and there's two ways this can work, the AG or the local DA. Unfortunately, many times the local DA was elected there in a Democratic county, and they don't care for election fraud. They don't care to prosecute. So that means we have to go to the AG's office. North of 20 cases has gone over, and let me tell you one of them. Just recently, there was a case in Northwest Mississippi where a judge, in his opinion, in an election challenge, said there is election fraud present in this race goes to the AG's office, I send it over. And I'm, I'm not here to attack, but I am here to ask people to do their jobs. I think that's really important for you, it's important for me. But one of the things that Florida did, they assigned an assistant attorney general to the Secretary of State's office to make sure these crimes are being prosecuted. Perhaps we do that, Mr. Pro Tem. Maybe we need that in Mississippi, where I have an assistant AG assigned to my office to prosecute election crimes, very important. So look, I wanna be very clear with one thing at elections. I don't control what happens in other states. We've got to be diligent. We've got to watch what goes on across this country. Do something. If it's getting in a phone bank, if it's going to be a poll watcher here in Mississippi, really important to do those things. But I want you to know here in Mississippi, rest assured, our elections are safe and they are secure under my watch. So be ready for that come November. I, I can't get up here without talking about our Tackle the Tape efforts. So very proud of them. When we cut the regulatory burden, that's not just policy, it's not just theory. That's putting more food on the plates on dinner tables. It's letting Mississippians grow in their businesses, giving them the opportunity to get away from these obstacles that government puts in their way. We've got a lot of folks in our office that do good work. I know Colby Williams is here in our office, Lee Janice. They do a phenomenal job with our Tackle the Tape efforts. But what's most important is you. When you're in business, when you're making films in Mississippi, when you're doing things in our state and you see a regulatory burden that's not good for you, that's bad for business, we need your help. You're the ones that see that can report that to us. And I tell you, one of the most important things to me is when I'm traveling the state and I sit down with people like Tommy Duff, who I saw back in the back over there, and I say, Tommy, what are those regulations that you see that trip you up, that really make it hard to do business in Mississippi? How can we cut those here in our state? By the way, thank you, Tommy, for being here. But that's really important. So when you see those regulations, I can't do it by myself. But as a team, working together, we can. And that's so important for you to be engaged in that space. Lastly, I can't leave also without talking about MBAT. It's our Mississippi Businesses Against Trafficking. If you're a business and your employees have not been trained on what human trafficking looks like, to whom to report that, please look at our website. Our MBAT job and the team that, that works on that, Liz Johnson heads that up in our office, doing a phenomenal job to the extent, just Monday, the United States Chamber of Commerce said, Michael, we see what you're doing in Mississippi. Will you please come to DC and tell these other states what they can be doing in their states? We are a national leader now in election integrity, in human trafficking work, in cutting the regulatory burden. By the way, we just won the Ideas Award from NAS, which is secretaries from across the country voting for the best idea coming out of secretaries' offices. We won the Ideas Award for our Tackle the Tape. It matters. It's, it's good stuff. And as I remind, uh, you know, remind all of you, I want you to be aware of an executive order that's in place right now. It's 14019 from the Biden administration. And it basically turns all federal agencies into voter registration arms and get out the vote arms of the current party in power. And I'm not attacking D's here, I'm not attacking R's here, but that's an American and it's unconstitutional. Your tax dollars should not be used to campaign for the person in power. That's wrong. So as we look at this, the worst part here, the section nine, I wanna spend just a second explaining to you why this is so important. Section nine deals with the Department of Justice. 
It talks about the Department of Justice, United States Marshal Service, and the Bureau of Prisons. Why is that important? In this executive order, it says, every agency under my authority will give me a plan to see how you're gonna vote, register to vote, everybody you come in contact with, and by the way, help them vote by mail if you can. This is the federal government. I was on a call with the White House, and I said, look, I see these plans. I want you to send me every one of them so I can see who is in Mississippi. And this is a quote from Justin Vail at the White House. He said, number one, not only did we ever intend for these plans to be public, they aren't public now. That's the White House telling a Secretary of State asking for plans about voter registration in my state, and they said, those aren't public, you can't have them. That should underscore the, the, the interesting piece of what's going on here. So let me tell you, they are working on getting into our prisons to register felons to vote. We just saw some word that came down that said, it's not your job, prisons, to make sure who's able to register or not. Get all of them. Lastly, I'll tell you this. We'll be filing a lawsuit against the Biden administration in the next few days to fight because Mississippians deserve someone who's going to stand in the gap. Be it election integrity, be it cutting the regulatory burden, I will always be an advocate for you wherever I am. God bless you. God bless this great state of Mississippi, and may God bless these United States of America.